It's time for the PowerShell Podcast. The podcast for PowerShell and the PowerShell community. And now, here's your host, Andrew Plaw. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another fantastic, boombastic episode of the PowerShell Podcast coming at you every single week, whether you like it or not. This week, we have a fantastic guest that I will introduce a little bit later on, and we're going to be talking about PowerShell and AI in K-12, authoring a book and developing YouTube videos and maintaining that presence, a new miscripts.org project we'll learn about. We'll learn about Jim's passion and projects, the transition from sysadmin to management, and maybe even make some room for music, sports, and dare I say, Disney movies. But first, we got to take care of the pre-show and... There's a bit to cover this week. So me, last week, I was fortunate enough, for those of you that know me, I work at PDQ, and I'm a remote employee. And it was our PDQ week, where everybody in the company gets to go to headquarters for a week. So I'm super fired up. I talk about it sometimes. I love going to conferences and being amongst people, and I I usually leave with a lot of great takeaways. And so I'm fired up. So if you see a pep in my step, you know why. I'm uh, fresh off of collaborating with all of my teammates and friends and That was just a great time. So a little peek behind the curtain there. More to come in that space. Also, the Gainesville PowerShell user group. We're back. Two days after this episode goes live, we have our first meetup of 2024. January 31st at 5.45 p.m. We'll be having that in person and on Zoom. So we'll meet you where you are. Uh, Looking forward to getting back to a monthly cadence. We're shooting for the last Wednesday of each month. We have a couple exceptions when we can't book the library. Um, But yeah, check us out on Meetup. Link is in the show notes. I also have some errata from something I misspoke on during the Daniel Schroeder podcast in episode 100. I was referring to certifications as certificates. I partially blame myself. I also partially blame how confusing that wording is, working in IT. Can we get less confusing names for things? Um, But yeah, it's certifications, not certificates. Although certificates of completion is also a thing. So don't let that confuse you. There's also some news on PowerShell AI. So I've talked about it before, but regularly, and I know some other people like Stephen Judd do this, where you'll take advantage of the AI command, just type in AI and you type in whatever question you want answered. It was a very short little simple way to get things done. Well, the model responsible for that command has been deprecated. And uh, I think Doug wrote some custom stuff around that. So the now way of doing that is to use the PowerShell AI assistant model module, excuse me. Um, which has an AI command in it, and I've been using that, and it's working well. So for everyone out there struggling with that, check the show notes for some links, both on the issue where we talk about this and for the PowerShell AI Assistant module. There is a Juniper runbook that has uh, some cool instructions on how to get started and start taking advantage of it. And it is pretty cool because you can kind of like create your own assistants. So more on that. Maybe we'll have Doug back on to talk to us about it and check out his user groups. He's been having a lot of AI meetups lately. There's a cool module I want to plug, PS Gallery Explorer. It is an awesome module by Jake Morrison to search for modules. um, And it just allows you to search for different criteria. Check that out, link in the show notes. New segment being added. It's called the Community Tip of the Week, where I will put out a post and people will give me their tips and we'll choose one. And this first tip of the week is brought to you by Daniel Schroeder and the tips module that we talked about recently. And the tip of the week is the add member commandlet can be used to add custom properties and methods to an object, whether it's a .NET object or a PowerShell object. This can be useful when you want to add additional information to an object or when you want to add a method to an object to perform some action. The add member commandlet has a member type parameter that can be used to specify the type of member to add. The most common types are note property and script method. The note property type is used to add a new property to an object, while the script method type is used to add a method to an object. Very cool stuff there. Check out the tips module. And that was our community tip of the week. Now, today on the podcast, we have a very special guest, and now we're getting to the bread of the episode, the reason people really tune in, and that's for our fantastic guests. And this week, We are not disappointing, my friends. We're joined by Jim Tyler at PowerShell Engineer, Director of Technology at Niles Community Schools, YouTuber at PowerShell Engineer, author of PowerShell for Systems Engineers, presenter, friendly guy, serial volunteer. Jim, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. It's been a long time coming. It's so cool to 
kind of come full circle because I've seen you on YouTube around. I think your videos get recommended since we're both making PowerShell stuff. And uh, I saw your comment and I was like, hey, I know that guy. Let's get <laughs> you on the pod. So welcome to the podcast, man. Great to meet you officially. Yeah, likewise. You know, I've been a listener since uh, since probably last winter is about when I started and uh, been a huge fan. Awesome. What was your uh, favorite episode if you've listened to a bunch? Gosh, this of course, there's been some, so many good ones, uh, but really, I think what really got me into like, okay, I'm gonna listen to every single one was uh, Doug Fink, and I think I, I think I was like catching up, then I went back. I can't remember because it was when he was talking about breaking down Import Excel and how just how he built that. I was like, man, this is so interesting, and I'm kind of driving down the road, and I'm thinking like, hey, I need to pay more attention to my driving here because this is like. So interesting. And I was like, I'm going to go back and loop back and listen to this again. Uh, just because it was so good. And, you know, uh, I hadn't heard of Import Excel until that podcast. Wow. You know, I, I presented at a conference. And this is actually after I had presented uh, two sessions in 2022 at a conference um, in Michigan for educational data systems. But I hadn't heard of it or use it. And I, now I feel like it's something that's like kind of a staple, especially as a, as a director. And uh, I, I asked uh, when I presented in 2023 at this conference, yeah, you know, just hands up how many people have heard of it and probably only got three or four hands in the whole room of maybe 60 people. So I'm like, OK, I'm not alone. And this is a you know, this is why we're so pro community and, you know, PowerShell is full of that. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. Discovering Import Excel for the first time, that's a huge win. There's so much easy value in takeaways, uh, especially if you're dealing in this sort of director level type stuff where you need presentable data. Um, yeah. Import Excel is a huge win. And it, I think what you're saying really speaks to how beneficial it is to have like connections in the community where you have opportunities to just say, hey, here's this module. Have you heard of it? And then people can be like, no. And you can be like, well, it's Here's some really easy wins and ways you can do what you're already doing, but make it more presentable and sort of elevate things and automate it and just make your IT world easier. It's a, it's a huge one. So shout out Import Excel, install module, Import Excel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. And I, you know, the way I loop it in, I'll just, you know, if I'm demoing something in a, in a presentation, I'll just be like, hey, you know, pipe that to Import Excel, like real quick, just so you guys can see that. Is it? And it's like, oh, hey, there's another value add you didn't even, you weren't even expecting sitting in whatever session it might be. Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a good model module for sure. Um, so can you share a bit about your background and how you came to work with PowerShell and, and then leading to your current role? Yeah, so I have a background as a systems admin uh, for years and worked in K-12 as a systems admin uh, from 2017 to 2020. I left and went to Amazon uh, as an IT support engineer. So I really got heavy into PowerShell and at that time working at uh, uh, the Varian Riza, it's kind of like a county level uh, support, um, we call it an intermediate school district or regional education service agency. So there's just a lot of needs for PowerShell in K-12 and you really can uh, get, get, you know, dive deep into it because there's so many things that PowerShell does for us in K-12. I mean, the, the biggest being user uh, management because um, we, have so many different identity platforms and you know we're just kind of like for years it's been like a lot of IT and I'm just kind of like trying to slap this stuff together and PowerShells are so effective at um, having our identities sync from our student information system which is usually PowerSchool and um, sync from that to Google to AD and all the different policies that get enforced that way um, what do you think of there are restrictions in students uh, and all the, all the things that would go along with that, um, that the PowerShell can sort of control and automate for us. So that's probably the biggest the biggest thing we're, we're seeing in K-12. That's my biggest background. So I did leave. I went to Amazon uh, as an IT support engineer. Then I uh, went to United Federal Credit Union um, as a systems administrator. Did a lot of banking stuff for a year. They had a core conversion, which was real interesting. We audited I automated a lot of things with PowerShell there as well, um, thinking like literally controlling the time of day that ACHs go through, and that was real interesting work. But really, my heart was with K-12, and uh, when some director positions opened back up in K-12, it was just a good fit. And I brought a lot from those experiences at the credit union and Amazon back to K-12. Um, and, you know, we're talking about when you start thinking about how you, the value out of 
PowerShell and automating things and doing things uh, the correct way every time and you know the time saving on, on, that that has, it, it's just a huge mindset add as a director. And I've heard other guests on your show talk about that, that, you know, hey, I, I kind of got good at, you know, I was setting myself up to be a director in a way because I was solving problems. Um, so it really does translate over into all the different things I have to do now, like procure laptops or how do we do inventory? You know, we, we get audited because we have different funding sources in K-12. And I literally wrote a PowerShell script to just pull serial numbers uh, to run against another list because I was like, Realize I could do this in Excel, but I know no better, and this is what I want to do. So, um, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good summary of professional background for the last you know a little while. Yeah. So you said you like working in K twelve, and it's kind of where your heart is. But what what's the benefit, and what do you enjoy about working K twelve? And and for those international listeners, what is K twelve? Yeah. So um, K twelve would refer to uh, early childhood education. So. Uh, specifically, I work in the public school system too here in Southwest Michigan, and so that would be, you know, our district does services all the way down to preschool, um, maybe even some other things. I don't totally know all the programs that go on there. There's lots of different programs for kids with different different needs, um, all the way up to. So we have our elementary schools, and then we have our middle school, our high school. We also have other special programs. Um, we have adult ed, we have way, we have alternative education. Um, so there's lots of different avenues to get your way all the way through the school system. That's something that's really nice about where I work now that we have so many different programs that can help people meet where they're at. And uh, I think, you know, the, there's obviously the value of, you know, contributing to the community uh, through helping children in the community. Something we say a lot is, you know, we've got a little over 4,000 kids in our district and that's kind of 4,000 reasons to get up and go to work every day, do, do the best that we can for what it is we do at the district, whether we're teachers or whether we're in any, any other role, you know, technology, operations. And um, that's something I try to remind my staff all the time. But from a technology point of view, we work with so many different pieces of technology and it's uh, really a community driven, uh, you know, atmosphere because we're all in the same boat and we, we don't have that that pressure of private sector where it's like, I'm not competing against another credit union. I can, I ask, I talk to all of our tech directors. We have quarterly meetings in our county. We have statewide conferences where we try to share best practices. Um, we even have a tech, tech director group chat for our county where I talk to the other, there's 13 of us in the in that, that, and then our, our county level tech director, um, we have a lot of shared services there. Like, hey, I'm seeing this problem, you know, it's testing day, there's an issue. And we all kind of work together at county level and at the state level, and really even, you know, there's national level too. So um, it really goes to a lot of stuff that we talked about, uh, you know, with the PowerShell conferences um, that everybody talks about on on this podcast. And I'm like, I, I'm like, we have that just in K-12 and it's great, you know? Yeah, I can see that. And I like how you mentioned, you know, feeling connected to the students and their success. And I think for for a job like K-12, it's pretty easy to feel the connection and see like tangibly, like, yeah, there are students who are out here depending on us for services and their education and, and really so much. I mean, that's a huge part of a person's life is school. So to be able to play an instrumental role in that, it's definitely got to feel good. Um, but I think that any job you're in, finding where you fit into things and how that relates to value and like belonging is so important. Um, and having a job that's kind of easy to tie together is, is quite nice. And also you mentioned the whole community aspect of things. And I, I really enjoy that. I've never been in K-12 work, but I could definitely see how everyone working and being on the same page and dealing with these large challenges and problems that are pretty common to other people in K-12 and kind of, I could see how that would be a pretty uh, invigorating thing to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it, it's just, you know, when you when you can throw out a script and be like, hey, what, you know, what's wrong with this? Or and, and uh, something that, which I, I know we'll get to talk about uh, the MI scripts thing where, you know, it's like, we're, we're all kind of doing the same thing. Like, why don't we, let's, let's get down and iron out those best practices even more. And uh, it's every district, well, most districts are using Google Chromebooks, you know, like we have the same challenges. Uh, 
especially with the identity management like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I want to talk about miscripts.org, but I'm curious, what's the PowerShell talent like when you're hiring? Are these people who've ran some commands? Are you having to train them? What's that like? Uh, yeah, so it it varies. Uh, um, I would say sys admin wise, we have people from all kinds of different backgrounds in K-12. And, um, you know, I've got people that worked in cabling that became a sys admin and then they're kind of you know, thrown into to uh, to doing PowerShell stuff and upgrading firewalls. You know, you kind of wind up being a jack of all trades uh, for the districts that you work with. Um, so PowerShell wise, from all the hires I've seen and done over the years, um, it's definitely uh, we don't have a lot of people with a ton of that start out with a ton of experience with PowerShell. Um, and part of that is and I've seen this in private sector roles that you know we get. We get things siloed and like this is kind of my camp and I'm not, I'm not really going to share what I'm doing with, uh, you know, with maybe every bit, every other piece of our technology department. Um, so what I've seen a lot is people don't have that because they've not been in an environment that is as collaborative as K-12 um, to get that PowerShell experience where they could do a project without, you know, getting a slap on the wrist or uh, having to, you know, beg for permission to do something, something new that could really they could really solve problems for people and save time for them. Nice. Now, you mentioned collaboration in myscripts.org. What is this? Yeah, so this is this is super new. And uh, my, you know, shout out uh, Chris Thomas from Ingham ISD. He's a desktop engineer. Um, it, he and Eric Kriebel and some other folks from, uh, I believe, Wayne Riza on the east side of the state uh, had this idea. Uh, after MAIDS, which is a, kind of our sysadmin conference for educational. So it's the Michigan Association of Educational Data Systems. We have a conference every fall. Um, when I mentioned the conferences I was presenting at, that's, that's what I was talking about. And they had this idea after the conference, more or less, uh, that, you know, we're doing these same things over and over again. So we want to build this repository of scripts and kind of vet it and basically create a script library for K-12 districts, and it really doesn't have to be just Michigan. There's nothing really Michigan-specific we're doing with this stuff, um, though it will start there um, as a group. So student sync scripts, I know our sysadmin, you know, that's the biggest one. Our sysadmin at the Varian Riza, he has scripts that automatically report on certificate expirations, um, all, all sorts of things. I don't even know what all they have <laughs> yeah. up their sleeve that they want to put in there. I always go back to student sync just because it's it's such an easy one and also account creation. Um, oh yeah, I've got uh, just standardizing that. I one of the big things I do over and over again wherever I go is build a Windows Forms PowerShell script that standardizes my account creation if that's my responsibility because there's just so many issues with non-standardization. It winds up saving time and creates more efficiency. Um, so. Eventually, they'll have a repository all together, and they'll vet these scripts, and we'll have a, something by maids of 2024, hopefully, to present. And be like, guys, go get the scripts. You know, the work is done. Why? Are, uh, what? You know, it's like, why are we reteaching how to do it when we already have the scripts sitting here over and over again? And so, it was it was a really good tip uh, from one of the guys on my team, uh, Robbie, who said, you know, for you did a really good presentation, you had really good reviews, but you need to do uh, sort of the food network approach and show, not just show how to make it, but he's like, you need to show the finished product every time. Mm. <laughs> or at least come up with like something that doesn't have any sensitive information, the, the finished product. Like, okay, this, this is, these are the steps to get here. Here's what it looks like, you know? So that, I think that's all kind of the, the drive on that. And I think it'll be really good for districts across the state once it's all done. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool to be tied to that initiative. And who knows how things are going to look in two to three years in terms of collaboration and shared automation and all that kind of good stuff. So very cool. Love to see the community involvement there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know we're, we're super excited for it. Now, you're K-12. You have people of differing PowerShell levels. You mentioned creating Windows Form. Are you creating tools for people to use? Or are you more creating scripts or what's, is there a tool making aspect of things? Yeah. So right now 
I'm, I'm taking uh, I'm taking this. I'm making a Windows form script that I'm going to give access on some level to uh, people in our business office because in our HR office that they'll be making. They're already kind of involved in account creation, and I'm almost kind of shifting that off of our team because they know the point at which employees are hired and the point at which employees leave. So really, you know, I had a great conversation with our assistant superintendent who worked a lot with that, with that, uh, that aspect of the district. Um, and I'll, I'll be making, I'll be taking the existing Windows Forms tool that we have that my team uses in doing a couple of extra things to help onboard and offboard people while writing a standard operating procedure that is in compliance with our board policy. So kind of trying to do it right by the book all the way, but I am also actually doing the PowerShell piece of it. So there's a tool, uh, poshgui.com. I'm, I'm not a, they don't sponsor me or anything like that. I just recommend <laughs> it all the time. Great Windows Forms maker. Um, but honestly, you know, chat GPT or BARD or any tool you, that you'd like like that, uh, you can give it just instruction, but can give me the, give me the guts of this and just make it for me. And it'll get you to a point where you can just extract that code and then put in your own functionality. So um, that, that's why I, I demo, I've demoed that two years in a row. Well, not the chat GPT, I did Posh GUI two years in a row, 2022, weren't using chat GPT yet. Uh, but I demoed that and literally uh, in my conference or my presentation at Maids uh, last year, I had so many people walking up to me. I have I have four ideas of a little tool like that for my sysadmins or whoever that that I you know I can you know I framed that too. I framed that in in my book and then in my videos. I was like, to me, that's a piece of automation because it it may not be a scheduled task running in the background, but it's automating those functions and making them more accessible to to staff that are even non technical staff. Yeah, because um, sometimes, especially with businesses and sounds like school districts, you can, it's very challenging to have a just piece of automation that will just run forever. A lot of times there does need to be a person entering it and when you can develop tools that empower them to not need your team to do more things and that is automating away problems. Um, and it, it, man, that sounds like a fun space to be in where you're developing tools for different departments and getting PowerShell all over the place. Um, I had a project where I created some tool for accounting to do some kind of thing. I don't remember exactly why, but it's just whenever you're dealing with the GUI and there's something kind of cool that you can interact with on the front end, it just feels so PowerShell because you're, I mean, it feels so powerful because it's just PowerShell, you know, that you're writing, but all of a sudden you're like going across business units doing automation stuff. It's like, well, nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've experienced that too. It's like, it, it's so, yeah, it's just like I solved a problem where it wasn't even in my my space or my department, you know. Um, and I've seen that too in a different environment where somebody was like having to add an Outlook calendar uh, to to a user, and it was a, it was a similar user creation script. And I was like, well, we just that's a line of PowerShell that we'll just do a checkbox if they need to be on that calendar in my my Windows form. Um, yeah, and it had it was just something that had nothing to do with me. But if you look at uh, and I talk about this uh, in the in the videos. And, and my other writings too. That uh, you know, we have there are continuous improvement teams that track the, the financials of of the labor that is saved. So if you if there's a half hour task that someone that's paid twenty dollars an hour or whatever thirty eight forty dollars an hour or even more uh, that is doing that they're doing once a week, you can actually track that as an earning or as a, or as a savings, I should say, uh, to your business office or to your managers and. It's just, a, I always want to try to remember, remind the sysadmins and people, anybody who's writing PowerShell, like keep that in mind of the value that you're adding and make sure you communicate that to management or whoever, um, because it demonstrates that you guys are doing the right thing and it's more than just code and stuff. But, you know, oh, that's tech stuff I don't understand. It's like, no, this is, this is dollars and hours. <laughs> Yeah, make it tangible for them and show the, yeah, it did take me a few hours to write this script. And I know it seems like I'm always head down working on some script, but being able to say, yeah, this ran 16 times in the past month, each time saving 30 minutes, there's eight hours saved right there. And that's just this one month. And if you keep doing that, it really increases over time and gets you to a place where you're less stressed, less overwhelmed, and can start doing more of the things that take uh, 
a little bit more time and attention to detail, which oftentimes if you're super overloaded, security is one of the first things we overlook. So, you know, automate, you get more secure, you get more happy. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, dude, you sold me. <laughs> I want a career in K-12. <laughs> 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 we'll move on maybe someday. <laughs> hey. uh, great benefits too, by the way. Oh, nice. Well, yeah. shout out to all of our K-12 listeners. Maybe we have some new ones listening to this episode. Um, but we support you in the PowerShell world. If there's anything you think we can do or some certain episodes or topics that you'd find helpful, always interested in getting people up to speed with PowerShell in the fastest way possible. Because I think there are so many people who with just a small amount of support could do so much more. Um, like you mentioned, discovering the import Excel module. There's so many examples of easy wins like that that just you, you sort of get by being in the community that can really change your career and make you feel a lot more competent at PowerShell and a lot more in the loop. Um, Cause there's a lot of variables that can be sort of hard to keep track of and feeling like you're part of a, a brain trust, so to speak, can be very advantageous. So, all right, pivoting, pivoting just a little bit. So you mentioned that you'd like to discuss how AI is impacting K-12. Uh, could you give us an overview of what you're seeing in this space, what you're looking at, what's exciting you? Yeah, so there there are a lot of amazing tools, more than I even know, and I, I you know I'm planning to do some professional development with our ed tech folks inside of our district here, and uh, just merely make some some micro videos that I can just send out and be like, hey, here's, here's 10, 20 good AI tools that, and you can watch us at your leisure, uh, but you know with prompting, uh, you know making develop developing lesson plans. Um, just making any kind of assignments, just just some of the repetitive stuff or stuff where they need teachers are needing new material. There's there's a lot of that's the huge value add. Um, but you know it, it's a real struggle in K twelve. It's, it's, it's a troublesome conversation at the moment because you know you've got the fear of you know just a plagiarism basically. That's a, that's a huge thing, and really the school boards need to get in a place where they have policy around it. So I think that I would probably guess most school boards are at that point right now. So the district is governed by, a, you know, an elected school board that makes policy and they consult with principally, a, a, you know, there are firms out there that write these policies for them. And there are some really well, well, well written uh, AI policies coming down the pipe that you know, teachers are even afraid to use it, I think. And it, it's it's a struggle because it's like, well, then it feels like I'm not, I, I shouldn't be doing this. And it's like, no, actually, you know, you read your district policy. It's typically, it's gonna say that, yes, you can you can use these tools, um, but, you know, just the, the biggest concern is we, we have, uh, you know, student records, that's protected information, right? So you don't wanna go into, Board policy says not to share any personally identifiable information about a student with anything. So if you're writing a lesson plan or, you know, a, le a letter or an email, uh, the only real restriction you have as a staff member is that you can't put a student's name in it. So the flip side, the other side of that is the student piece of it. So you had a lot of districts when, when ChatGPT first exploded and scared everybody, they just, they just blocked it. They just block it because we also have content filters. So we, because we have to filter the internet inside of a school. It's a whole other conversation. But, um, well, it, you know, good or bad, you know, school board superintendent is scared. Like, hey, just block it, you know. Um, and I, I was in that spot before, not not here. But uh, it's like, okay, well, then the policy caught up. It's like, well, it's actually not blocked. Uh, there are acceptable uses. So the, the student acceptable use, a piece of it is, it's really, it's kind of up to your building principles and how they want to approach it. But, you know, it can be used as a re, uh, as a research tool. Uh, can you be used, at, uh, you know, depending on what tools we're talking about, uh, you know, to map data, to graph data, you know, why, why are we, why would we inhibit students from doing that? And it turns out that's an acceptable use uh, of, of the tools per board policy. So uh, I think we, in K-12, we have a, we, we, we have the challenge to, to explain that and bridge that gap to make sure that we're getting our students and our staff at a comfortable level with it to where they're using it to where they can really benefit on a day-to-day -day basis and 
honestly, you know, our job is to equip them to go out into the workforce someday and they're going to be using it there. Um, you know, if I'm using it to write an email, why we, we don't want the students to think that they shouldn't be using it. Um, you know, so, you know, they have more stringent rules on it. It's just, you know, go, you know, surrounding ethics and plagiarism. But I think, uh, you know, we, we talked about this other departments. You know, so, the, so the big department that we'd be afraid of is the English department, right? Like writing papers. Because <laughs> you can get on ChatGPT and say, hey, write a 500 word essay on the War of 1812 as a fourth grader. <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, you know, we've done, I've shown this to people. That's always the one I go to to scare them. Like, the War of 1812 is a big war that happened a long time ago. You know, and it just writes it. And it's like, okay, that's, how is that going to be discernible uh, to somebody? <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, you know, we, we've been here over and over again in education. Uh, years ago, math teachers, there were apps that would solve math problems for you, right? And show the work and give you the work. So math teachers were sitting here seven years ago in the same, the same boat. So I think it's about being open-minded to the new technology and just not having a panic because there's always, you know, you look back at the 80s, like, ban the calculators. You see, there's, you could Google it. There's math teachers protesting calculators because it's because it's cheating you know uh so we're at that point where we need to just help them get over that fear and you know do do what our boards our school boards allow us to do uh to facilitate it correctly yeah yeah because i can see i mean it seems like it's going to be a very very pivotal tool for forever for in the workforce in the future and you don't want to have the kids not use a tool that's going to be so prevalent, but you don't want them to overuse it to the point that it interferes with them actually learning. Um, but man, it's a very powerful tool. I was just thinking um, when it comes to asking PowerShell questions, like I think a lot of the time prior to asking a question, say you have no clue about it. If you run that situation through AI, I think a lot of times you'll get some really good starting points on things you can look into. If you still have problems, you can certainly bring up the question, but I think it's so helpful for so much. And it doesn't always get you 100% of the way there, but really so many times it leads you in the right direction, in my experience. And I'm also thankful I'll never have to do regex again. No <laughs> brain space is going towards that. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And, you know, actually, uh, last fall, I, I did a session that was called PowerShell AI. I did it with my uh, system administrator at the time, Nathan, and uh, we co-presented on just going back and forth with some tools like that. And to, to your point, you know, with GitHub Copilot, I was like, we're going to code with comments and demonstrating that to a group of sysadmins was just such a huge value. And <laughs> I think we may have done a regex example. I can't remember. But that's a great one. Be like, yeah, give me this pattern in regex and the comment. And then it's just like, okay, cool. <laughs> it just gets it for you. I think it's also really good for tone checking. Like if you need to communicate something to someone else. For me, it takes energy sometimes if I'm super busy to make sure I'm saying things in a not rude way or whatever. Um, you know, usually I'm pretty good at it, but just having it as like a, hey, you know, what do you think about this text from a, to a coworker? I want it to remain professional, uh, blah, blah, blah. And it can be really helpful for just saying things less rudely and sort of policing tone a little bit. Oh, but it's yeah. a really great, yeah, I didn't even think about it. It's a good use. I should run my emails through that. <laughs> sometimes, for sure. For sure, it can be helpful because like, I think a lot of us, we have the technical knowledge um, and mixing between technical and then saying things in a super collaborative, helpful way. Uh, for me, it can be a struggle. I'm just like bullet points, here, what work, do this, and then turn <laughs> it into something a little bit. I mean, I have to change the words up a little bit, but it gets you started. Yeah. Um, it's just cool. so helpful. Yeah, I'm guilty with that too, because it's like, hey, there's this thing happening and like just trying to break down and I almost get to, be like too robotic with it, like trying to explain like, hey, we have a firewall refresh. What, is, what, what does that mean to you? And the, you know, like the downtime, what, or, you know, it, yeah, that, that's a tough one. Yeah, and you can even get it to like format things nicely where like the date and time is bolded and the certain keywords and it's kind of organized nicely. But yeah, a lot of a lot of good wins to be had in AI. It's, it's a pretty cool space. It's fun to be in IT as this continues to develop. Yeah, absolutely. I just saw some really cool tools, uh, uh, you know, just with the script writing for, our, we use uh, for our iPads and our Macs, we use this thing called Mosul, it's an MDM. And uh, they had like a tool, it's like, hey, you know, we have specific scripts that we run on the Macs as part of the deployment. 
and it's just an AI tool that's just built into it. It's kind of like GitHub Copilot, but it's like, it's just really, really pervasive everywhere. There's like some kind of tool with everything, it seems like. Yeah, I, th I think as time goes on, we'll find more AI bots that are sort of integrated with things. Um, and I hope they make those implementations easier and easier so we can see them in more and more industries. Um, because, I mean, having a nice AI that can search your whole knowledge base and that you can have like kind of a nice long prompt to go along with it to give it more context and to make it more direct, I can see that being super helpful. Um, but again, I think that space needs to mature just a bit for widespread adoption. But they're clearly investing in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To that point, a little segue, I, I talked about some of the volunteer work I do. I'm on my city planning commission, and I actually was just playing around with this, making a GPT uh, for the city of Waterloo, where I just uploaded census data into it. And I'm like, how can this help us on a planning level, you know, um, on the planning commission? Uh, so make a graph of this trend, you know, and I'm just playing with that, just trying to unlock this, this publicly available data. It's like, where, where are we missing from it? That we don't have to sit around and analyze it forever and talk about it. But you know, and that, who knows? I, I, I thought about doing that internally here, uh, making a custom GPT just for no identifiable information, but for like our inventory. Like, hey, where here's all these spreadsheets of inventory from different systems. Uh, find the serial number, every data point in the serial number for me, you know, because I can't, I need to know when this was purchased, with what money was used to purchase it. Um, there's just so much. Yeah, we, we could probably go on and on. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think that for some organizations, maybe they'll be more self-hosted and we'll have less to worry about sending certain information up the wire. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting space. Definitely the whole creating assistance, I'm, I'm into that. But the PowerShell AI assistant module, it's sort of based around that. And I know that in ChatGPT, like you can create your bot and share the conversation link and sort of, yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff there. That's kind of in the past two weeks where I'm like, yeah, I need to create some cool AI assistants for myself um, and start using them. Because with the PowerShell AI Assistant, you can start to script things a little bit, um, automate further, maybe connect it with chatbot and sort of have it even more integrated with my work experience. Um, but yeah, man, a lot of cool stuff in the AI space. But I want to hear about your projects and passions. Like in particular, how'd you get started on YouTube? Because like four and a half thousand subscribers, that's pretty solid, man. How'd you, you've been there for a while. How'd you initially get your feet wet? Yeah. So with YouTube, I've been there. It's like, you know, it's like my account I made 2010 or something like the account's just been sitting there. Um, but I had the idea, I saw that somebody had a, you know, learn Python and I hope I can give the credit to it. And there's probably a bunch of them. They had like a learn Python in less than X hours. And I was like, why doesn't that exist for PowerShell? So after maids 2022 I, I went i got you know i was like i had this idea and I'm like i kind of wrote down uh you know here's all the quick quick things that just be like hey commandments variables loops you know programming stuff and then just some ad examples so it was like so that video's got like 160,000 views or something and uh it, now I and mean, i just kind of threw it out there and it just kind of went off and then I, I kept making more and more uh videos from there but, uh, you know, I also wanted to use, and I'm sorry, too, if anybody goes and watches that, I know I, I've heard over and over again, if I would have known it would have got over 100,000 views, I would have used a better microphone. <laughs> I fixed the volume, so rookie mistake on me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I use, like, just, quote, fun examples, you know, I'm, like, using Pokemon examples, X-Men examples and that, and uh, just just to be like, you know, this, let's not think business use cases, let's just get through Here's how you do just some simple stuff in Power PowerShell. Uh, and so yeah, I did that, and then I had the idea for the book, which I kind of mapped out from there, and I've made a lot of free videos uh, based on the book. So um, the different chapters, where I've just lumped all these videos like on automation together, or file system management, and so that those are kind of my most popular videos. They're like the uh, kind of like just like the brain dump on a particular PowerShell thing. I think there's a lot more, a lot more to be done uh, with with those, and I'm sort of challenged to, to keep coming up with new stuff. And you know, I've I've tried to. I think I'm two weeks behind right now with recording this of doing one, just because I'm been so busy with other stuff on the weekend. Based podcasts, yeah, yeah, podcasts. <laughs> uh, I'm on the 
board now for my daughter's, uh, she's in this group called Children's Music Workshop and they're having auditions and all this stuff is going on. So, um, yeah, there's, there's always something going on uh, off hours. So but I do try to make the time for the PowerShell and I think there's uh, more more work to be done um, with that, with that platform. But as to why it's, uh, you know, four and a half K subs and I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. People really like the stuff that I'm throwing on there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to read through the comments. It definitely seems like you resonated with some people and, and they found your information and helped them out. And that's so important for people early on in their PowerShell journey to demystify some of this stuff and sort of hold their hand and show them like this, these constructs and things like that aren't, it's not magic. There is a way that it works and uh, just go through that and teach them it. You can really empower them to do some awesome things in their organizations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I get people in the comments all the time, uh, Hey, can you help me with this? You know, it, it, it's something, you know, it, it's just simple, simple to us, I shouldn't say, because I don't, I don't mean to, you know, devalue anyone's experience, but, you know, it's like, yeah, just that little thing that's like frustrating, uh, you know, like just the execution policy. I, that's why I always harp on that. Like your first time in PowerShell, you go try to do something. It's like, ah, you can't do it. Restricted. <laughs> and just, just being nice to somebody and helpful, you know, like, yeah, this is what you can do to get around that. To start doing the little things that you need to do just to learn on on that on that level on the beginner level. Yeah, there's such a need for more beginner content. There's such a, an untapped pool of people who could be making use for PowerShell and haven't embraced it for whatever valid reason. Um, so kudos to you for seeing an opportunity to help and, and taking advantage of it. From what you've said about your volunteer work, it sounds like you're not one to say no to being helpful. So <laughs> absolutely. <not. laughs> Uh, my my wife says I'm hitting the limit soon. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find that balance. Yeah. Um, so with the book, so you mentioned you had some videos and you started thinking about a book, but man, that's quite an undertaking. Can you go into a little bit more detail about why you thought uh, authoring a book was next up for you? Is this your first book? Uh, yeah, it's my first technical book. I, I wrote some books. like I wrote a book of like poetry forever ago, like in college. I was taking a lot of English classes. Um, and, uh, but yeah, for, for PowerShell, I just, uh, you know, that was, and these are all self-published, uh, by the way, you know, just back then there was a thing, oh, oh, I'm sure it's still on Cafe Press, they did books. I don't know if they still do books, but you know, the Amazon Kindle direct publishing program uh, is really cool. So that's what I had explored to do for this. Uh, I don't know why, I don't know what really drove me to write the book. I think I just wanted to add more validity to the, the content on YouTube, just be like, yeah, hey, I'll, or you're like, here's something else. If you really want to go deep, like there's like a, a deeper dive into some of the stuff. And there's there's other PowerShell books that are really good. And, you know, but again, trying to trying to just tap that beginner, uh, you know, market or whatever uh, of people looking to be like, hey, yeah, what, what more can I do? You know, the subtitle of the book is it's PowerShell for Systems Engineers, leveraging automation in chat GPT to solve business problems. So with the book at the end of, after chapter three. So I do kind of an intro to, you know, here's just the basics of PowerShell, where command lids, you know, get help, get member, whatever. And then two, chapter two, I go into programming languages, which I, I do see in other books, but I kind of looked at, took a look at some of the Python books that talked about, uh, you know, just like how, what their approach was to learning, a, you know, the different kinds of loops and variables and types uh they, they go along with programming because you need to have that really to start making a bigger script uh that does more and more things so i do that then i go into automation and talk about the windows forms you know uh, scheduled tasks and then from there on out every chapter has an example of automation and using chat gpt in some fashion to to do something with with whatever the topic of the chapter was because I, I didn't want it to be, here's just a reference book. I wanted it to be more like, I, I, I think I said that it says this in Amazon, it's a strategy guide of how to use PowerShell to do a couple different things. You know, whatever it is you're trying to do. And throughout the rest of it, you know, I talk about parsing HTML, using APIs. Uh, I, I have examples of connecting to all the major cloud platforms and how to do that. 
with PowerShell and then like, okay, well, what, you know, what would you want to maybe automate with that? Um, well, maybe I want to send my Veeam backups to a S3 bucket, you know, that's an example we go back to. It's like, that's like a simple thing to do. And that's a simple exercise, really, a little script to set up, but it's a value add for you if, if you take a look at that. So, um, yeah, I made the book in color too. Uh, it just drives the black and white screenshots drive me nuts. And uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> so I don't, uh, it, it, it makes the book, the book cost more, <laughs> but I'm just like, I, don't, I, I just want to have color, man. <laughs> five bucks more maybe or something like that nice. <laughs> uh and then it's also uh you know there's the ebook of it too but i kind of also wanted to create a framework be like yeah yeah talk about this in chapter two you know like if i'm making videos like if you want to go learn more about this here's like the baseline if you're interested in the content i create nice it's a good approach i'm sure you learned a lot going through the process sort of refined how you want to teach these things and really explore the topics a little bit deeper than someone who just already knows it all. Yeah. Yeah. Who's <laughs> who already knows it all? <laughs> Everything, you know, it all. Right? Yeah. That's a tough thing. Yeah. And I actually did re refine in the process and the process of making it was, was, uh, you know, it was, man, it was time consuming. I was trying to get it before baseball season started. I was trying to wrap it up. I'm like getting up at five on Saturday mornings, working on it. You know, while nobody else is awake because I, I was coaching my daughter's uh, softball team and I coached my son's t-ball team at the same time last year. And I was like, this has to be done before <laughs> that starts because that's four or five days a week worth of work after hours. And just focus-wise, I won't be there. Um, so I really pushed myself between uh, the basketball season and the baseball season uh, to, to get that done. And, you know, formatting it, learned all like the different, what a pain it is to format the KDP. And I'm like, okay, I submitted it, kicked it back. Like, and having to go through all that uh, was pretty interesting. But yeah, I don't know. And like, really, I have going through it, having drilled it, having to write something to explain it is so different than thinking you already know it because you wrote it in a script before. And now, like, some of that stuff is just like, and not everything, but uh, it's just like drilled of like, how would I explain this? You know, what's the canned response? So I think it went like, screwing around with scripting at this point, like, it, it may be ultimately just what, what's in the toolbox. And then especially with adding the AI stuff into it, like we really have a toolbox. It's so like somebody's, we're trying to accomplish a task. I know what, at least roughly what to do to start and really execute it hopefully well. Awesome. Well, we'll have a link to that book in the show notes. And you mentioned involvement in sports and music. I'm curious, what instrument do you play, if any? What's your background in music? I don't play any instruments. Uh, I was involved in concert choir and jazz choir in high school oh. and uh, in middle school a little bit. Um, I mean, the voice is an instrument, so. Yeah, yeah that's right. My voice is the instrument. Uh, so my, my daughter plays the trumpet and piano, and she loves musicals and, and sports and stuff, too. Um, Sports-wise, back in the day, I only played basketball up through middle school. Uh, but yeah, we we watch it all in our house. We watch mainly baseball, and football. We're, we're big, big, big baseball people. Stuff. So. Nice, awesome. Well, this has been quite the journey getting to know you. I've had a great time, uh, but I have some weird questions. You know, we used to do this thing called the common parameters, where we'd ask the same three questions, and I made a promise that they'd be a little bit more uncommon this year. So I'm trying to stay true to that statement. Stephen Judd's held me accountable for that. So I'm going to start off the zany part of this interview with a question. If PowerShell were a Disney movie, which one would it be and why? Wow. You have to get this one right. I know it's a, it's a hard one, but you got to get it. Uh, if PowerShell is... I, I would say it's it's Moana. It's got to be Moana because Moana goes on the journey, right, and eventually oh. finds itself and solves solves the problem. Dude, why does everyone answer these questions so well? <laughs> My gosh, that's such a good answer. You and Jordan are both crushing it. He answered like, "What is if PowerShell were a song?" It was like Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm like, wow, 
<laughs> and here we are again, Moana, because she goes on the journey. Wow. Well, listen, everyone listening right now, you're on that journey. We're on that journey. We're on this journey together. We're better together. Um, awesome. All right. You mentioned Import Excel was a module that you discovered. So we'll give a plug for that. But what is another one or two modules that you feel like when you show people, it sort of blows their minds a little bit or are just super helpful or underutilized or whatever you deem appropriate? Yeah. And it's a, I'm a huge fan of Doug, of course, but, you know, PowerShell AI is a good one. I, I, I would say, you know, I was thinking of the three I would pick. Uh, honestly, that PowerShell tips, though, that just learning about that. And uh, I've been, you know, just, just using it, just like, hey, give me a tip. That, that's sweet. And that, that needs to be presented. At, uh, I know I'll bring it up at Maids this year because, I mean, what a value add, <laughs> you know. Yep. And, and, and with what, you know, I'm assuming that's where you get, you know, you're now doing the tips on the show. That's great. Like, there's just all those little things, like, going back to what you said about, like, import itself, like, yeah, hey, what thing am I missing that I, I, I'd i hate to be two years around later, like, I could have known about that the whole time. Um, you know, that yeah, I really do, I think the AWS module, too, is a, I'm, I'm at more than three now, but I think that's a great module just for doing simple, I think there's great use case stuff for that, and it works really well, it's structured by someone you can tell that appreciates PowerShell and the way that the commandlets and stuff are the way they work. Yeah. That's some good answers. All right. All right. You passed that. Now, last but not least, imagine we have a budding K-12 sysadmin. Bright eyes, impressionable, eager to learn. What is some advice that you think would be helpful to a sysadmin in that situation yeah i just think uh i could give some specific you know training pointers i would say man, well first of all yeah listen to this podcast i did plug this podcast by the way I'm not just this oh thank you <laughs> uh and uh because i'm like just just as a function of you know together is better uh you know the community is you know, especially the K-12 system, said, we'll take, we'll take you to the conferences right away. You know, it was like, you need to go to the conferences, meet other people, hear all the big wide world of what is out there. And um, uh, just be unafraid to, to start learning this stuff and propose ideas and projects. You know, I, you know, hopefully, I, I think in most K-12 uh, environments in, our, in the districts, you're always gonna have a willingness um, from the tech director. So people may be saying out there, you know, maybe not my district, but like, I'm sure there's edge cases, right? But, uh, you know, they're like, yeah, hey, you're going to solve a problem for me that saves time and like make something more consistent. Like, like, yeah, don't be afraid to ask to try to solve it. Because I feel like, you know, I feel like I waited. I think I was maybe more hesitant on stuff. Looking back, maybe seven years ago, like, could have solved more problems. You know, like if I was just, you know, build the thing first. Going back to what I talked about earlier, it's like, Show show your manager what 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 the promised land is, <laughs> and make them believe. You know, but also you got to believe in yourself and always be willing to work together as well. Good advice. So if you are a budding K twelve sysadmin, we'd love to hear from you. Um, would be a funny sort of uh, turn of events if there is one that takes every single little bit of advice and turns themselves into a director one day and maybe an author, maybe a YouTuber, who knows what people have in store for them, but you got to go on the journey to find out and take that one step at a time. Jim, it's the part they've all been waiting for. I got a shill for this podcast. Um, so thank you so much, beloved listeners, for another fantastic, bombastic, community-centric, awesome weekly episode of the PowerShell podcast. Give us a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice, Jim, we're everywhere, man. Everywhere. And Taiwan, we were like 157 three weeks ago. Let's go. It's it's a big deal. Technology subcategory. Um, and we we're only there for two days. But hey, we were there. You can give us feedback. PowerShell at pdq.com. You can find me on socials at Andrew Plaw Tech. I'm Andrew Plaw on LinkedIn. Um, it would be awesome if you could keep sharing those PowerShell tips with us. You'll see me posting about it. You can send it to PowerShellPDQ.com as well. Jim, it's been great getting to know you, man. I appreciate you joining us on the podcast. Uh, if you're out there listening, 
make sure to check out his book. Check out his YouTube channel. We'll have links in the show notes. Uh, Jim, where can people find you on the World Wide Web? If they want to stay in touch, see what you're doing, maybe say, hey, thanks for being a guest. Where can they find you? Absolutely. So LinkedIn, uh, linkedin.com slash in slash James Tyler. Find me. I will accept the connection request. And uh, on uh, X at Jim R. Tyler. And then, of course, on YouTube at PowerShell Engineer. Boom. And links to all those will be in the show notes. Jim, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And listeners, thank you for listening. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for listening to the PowerShell Podcast. The PowerShell Podcast is a PDQ production, making device management simple, secure, and pretty damn quick.